just a magical experience to be able to play this music in Ireland. It's breathtaking everything about this place, especially being here with the people that you, know, you love and just that share the same passion you do. It's this feeling of belonging and it's almost like I felt Irish. For me, it's very special to sort of pass on this tradition, you know, especially to American kids. We knew it was an incredibly spiritual place, and once we performed there, all the spiritual music we did just fell into place. doors were packed, like people were standing up in the back because there weren't any seats. It's very moving. And you can see when the audience is getting emotional. It was better than river dance. This is absolutely amazing. Everywhere I go, even on the bus rides from town to town, I'm just, I can't, I don't want to go to sleep. I don't want to take a nap because it's so beautiful here. And we wanted to perform this music for the Irish. Here we are at the Irish Memorial in our hometown, Charleston, South Carolina. Behind me, you can see the deep waters of our beautiful port where so many Irish came to our beautiful community. You know, the Irish brought with them so many things. They brought their work ethic, their customs, their food, and most importantly to us, they brought their music. I grew up with Irish music being such an integral part of my life. It was, I mean, I, I don't think I'm exaggerating to say that it was there every day. It was the likes of the Clancy Brothers and the Dubliners and the Chieftains. It just was so much a part of my life, it seemed like second nature. stretches.
it's it's amazing that they were able to recreate this setting here and uh, where the Titanic was built, and we were able to sing in this great ballroom. So yeah. it was awesome. It's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Well, not that. I thought you did really, really well. Um, again, when the going gets tough, you got to watch your director. Um, John took some tempi that you're not used to, and Mary had to make adjustments. There's really nothing that can be done other than just watch your director and try to make sure it stays together. You did better on the second half of making more sound, but you know, guys, it's the big time. If you're tired, you, you have to push through. You have to push through and do it anyway. The Taylor Festival Choir is an elite choir of singers that come from all over the United States. We have a core of Charleston singers, but we also fly singers in from every corner of the United States. So it's a professional group, but also a family. I'm exceptionally proud of this group. Because what, what they're doing is very difficult, very difficult to do. Nuffid Larry means the fiddlers in Irish, and the name comes from my wife's dad, who is fluent in Irish. running through it. Straighten out the glasses all the way, folks, and up to the top of the gold heart is where you're going. My wife and I are both perfectionists, and we're driven to make music at the very highest level. One and two. After our first concert, we focused on what we thought could go better, and then I really focused on spe specific spots. The singers gave me feedback, you know, we don't think these measures went so well. And then we rehearsed them. I think, I think that the three soloists also knew it needed to establish. And even though it wasn't a, a concert space, we had enough room to sing and really improve some things that we thought could be better.
today. We're really excited to be here at one of the most mystical and spiritual places in the world, the Monastery of Glendalough. It's been here for over a thousand years, founded by St. Kevin, and we'll be performing at St. Kevin's Chapel today. St. Kevin's Cave is, is not too far from here where the, where the great monk lived and founded this place. This very stream he's reputed to have stood in while he was praying during Lent so long that a bird formed a nest in his hand. It's so wonderful to be able to be here and perform this music that's so spiritual and just, it, I feel like it's really connecting everybody into one place. There's a feeling there. I've been there probably five times now. There's no words to describe the spiritual, the sanctity, the mystical feeling that you get. The, the songs, uh, meaning, the symbolism, I really felt it when we were uh, in Glendalough. That was the most amazing performance I have ever witnessed. These were incredible and so nostalgic. Physically where you are now is you're standing on an island. It's one of nine islands in the middle of one of the largest natural harbours in the world. It's a wondrous historical location. It's extraordinarily important and significant uh, that the Robert Taylor Group come to visit us, particularly here in Cove, because much of the history of this particular place is intertwined and interlinked with North American history and the history of the USA. Well, we're at the Cove Heritage Center, and I'm sitting here looking at a statue of Annie Moore right there in the background. She was the first Irish immigrant, actually the first immigrant ever to come through Ellis Island. Millions of immigrants left from here and isn't it wonderful to see them back sharing their new culture with ours, an ancient culture, and that synergy between both peoples is what is signified by their visit here. My father was born in Castle Bar, that's in the west of Ireland, and my mother was from Dublin. My dad was one of 13 children, so I have relatives all over the place, probably a million cousins. Being here, it's personal because my own ancestors and especially my wife's mom and dad immigrated from this port. So being here just makes it, it's real. So this is my mom, it's a picture of my mom. Many of 
My relatives immigrated. My aunt Sadie immigrated. That was one of my mother's sisters. And then my father, who was one of 13, he had several brothers um, and sisters leave. And my dad would tell me stories about how they literally had to climb a rope ladder to get onto the ship and how terrified my mother was having to do that. And, and all of the relatives and everybody waving on. I can picture that in my mind and how, how much bravery and trepidation there must have been there having to take that leap. When it was still a hundred miles offshore, the passengers had come down from the hotels and the rooming houses and they gathered right over there at the base of those steps to await embarkation by ferry to the Titanic. The uh, next song I'd like to sing for you, my wife's gonna kill me for doing this. And, uh, <laughs> and the reason she's gonna kill me is because she has to play in this next piece. But her very own mother immigrated from this spot and she passed away earlier this year. And this is her favorite song. And now her brother lies in a hospital room struggling for his life, but he has had a turn for the better. There's a ray of optimism. So I'd like to dedicate this to Joan and Kevin Scott. And I'll have to compose myself for a second. <laughs>
There's a lot of emotion, the history of the building, the history with Mary and Rob um, and their family leaving from here. And um, it was just a really emotional and really great performance and really excited to be a part of it. I think that every time we go to a new place and especially perform, a new layer of meaningfulness is added on to their experience and it just deepens the whole reason that we're here. This is what we dreamed about. A lot of people were singing with us and uh, crying. We sold out of your CDs too. I can't believe it. No. Here we are on the Cliffs of Moher, and this is one of the most incredible places in all of the world, much less Ireland. You can see the sea crashing into these cliffs just like they've done for tens of thousands of years. It's the power of the sea that created the erosion that created these cliffs, and that power is what we're singing about in our program. If you just closed your eyes up there, it's, you could feel everything, just the sort of natural energy of the nature and the f sound of the waves crashing against the cliffs.
I don't think any of us knew what we were going to get when we went to Kylemore Abbey. And having performed there now, I can say that it was something none of us will ever forget. It's this tiny little chapel, but there was as many people crammed into that chapel as could possibly fit. And it was a very multinational flavor because there was a lot of tourists there. And once word got out of our performance, people just kept coming in and kept coming in. It was almost like a flash mob. I mean, it was a planned concert and people knew we were gonna be there, but there were some people there they could just heard the music or, or heard words, so we just kept getting more and more people. And by the end, it was completely packed. The, the vibe I got from that concert, I felt more connected with the music in that concert than I have with any other concert we've had here so far. And I think that's because the audience took to the music so well. I mean, they you could really tell that they were enjoying themselves and just we were enjoying ourselves. Everyone was having a good time.
great. What a beautiful place to perform. And I had so many people come up to me telling me how moved they were by the concert. And I mean, that's really what you're looking to do when you're a performer is to speak to someone in the audience and it's just so great to know that we got to do that. Well, it was absolutely probably the best concert I've seen in Ireland. Oh my goodness. I know, and you're from America. Where's next, Paul? Uh, St. Nicholas Collegiate Church, Galway. We're trying to take the uh, equipment down in a, a taxi right now. Here we are. And Collegiate Church of St. Nicholas is where we're going to give our final concert tonight. It's going to be bittersweet, but I know this last concert is going to be spectacular because listen to the acoustic of this place. And one interesting thing, this church was a place where Columbus actually came and prayed on his way to the New World. So to bring music back here from the New World is just, in a sense, it comes full circle. And I know I'm going to be feeling that tonight. And here we are from America bringing music back to a place where Columbus stopped to pray on his way to discover America. It's, it's incredible. But this is an unbelievably beautiful space and the acoustic is sumptuous. I cannot wait to what it's going to sound like tonight. Give me a note, let's hear it. Ah! Can I have a D one more time? And up. I think that's too loud. I think especially in here. It's marked piano, right? Am I right? Okay. Ready? Good. It gets a little, it gets a little, it gets a little. really hollow and rounded and, and, and it'll carry like crazy in here. Okay, and up. We are the Taylor Festival Choir and Nuffet Larry, and we come from Charleston, South Carolina. This is our final concert in a five concert tour. Um, the Taylor Music Group is the organization that supports these two ensembles, and our aim is to support classical music and folk music. And in fact, this concert, as you'll see, combines those two idioms. Taylor Music Group is named after my father, who was a high school choir director back in Arkansas in the States. You know, I really did have the greatest of all possible upbringings. My dad, Bob Taylor, was a choir director from my home state of Arkansas, and my mom, Cornelia, was essentially his assistant. And my whole upbringing was just going around with them to their rehearsals and to their concerts and their, their festivals, just soaking up everything they did. It was a wonderful time. And I think the thing that I soaked up the most was my dad's philosophy. My dad really believed that classical music was this thing, you know, you really dedicate yourself to and you give your whole life for. But folk music was like this ingredient that defined who you are and, and, and what your people were. And so that's what Mary and I have tried to do with the Taylor Music Group, is put together an organization that just brings to fruition this idea of my father's, that folk music is like the fabric of, of who you are as a people, and then, then art music is this, this, this ultimate expression, and, and it really all comes back to this incredible upbringing of, of my childhood. My father cried, now my darling son. My wife, she cried.
join us. Well, that brings us to a close and I just want to thank you again for being here and I do want to make it clear that that woman picking gum off of my derriere was my wife. We are in the house of God and I don't want there to be any scandals. I don't want any church officials waiting for me outside. I'd also I'd like to thank all of you, all the performers who have worked so hard over these past few days and you talk about the great exports of Ireland. Right over here sits in my opinion, the greatest Irish guitarist in the world. This is the great John Doyle. Oh, thank, you. You. thank you. I am thank so you. impressed. Thank you. That's my daughter. No way. That's my daughter. I was going to ask you how they kids you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Oh, you are. You are just good. Thank I, you. I have no other words to say. I'm just like. Oh, <laughs> oh well, thank oh, you. I'm thank I, you. I, I'm a music fan. And are you? I, oh, totally. I listen to everything, and this is just. Wow. I, I, I've got a new interpretation of Irish music. Oh, well. And. What you brought to me today was even more reinforced my oh, love wow. for this music.
First of all, your concert was phenomenal, but that's not what I want to stop to say. You know that guy that thought that everything we did was just the best thing he'd ever heard. He, he gave us a standing ovation multiple times. Yeah. His name was Lucky. It turns out that Lucky is the first cousin to some guy named Bob Dylan. And I am not making that up. That is Bob Dylan's first cousin. And he wasn't going to tell us, but his wife said that this is who he is. He doesn't like to make a big deal. He doesn't like to make a big deal of it, but I think it's pretty safe to, to say that his cousin Bob will probably hear about us. He's going to follow, he's going to come to South Carolina next year during the Spoleto Festival, specifically to hear all of us again. Couldn't quit talking about it. So anyway, you've really impressed a lot of people, but you can go home and say, we blew away this guy who happened to be Bob Dylan's first cousin. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a really magical experience and it's been something that uh, I'll take with me for the rest of my life. Places have a vibe and to experience that vibe firsthand is a once in a lifetime opportunity for some of these kids and I know they'll never ever forget it. What's it like out there? It's, I like it. It's cold though. <laughs> I'll take a plunge. For those of you that haven't brought a swimsuit, there is an area of the beach where you can <laughs> swim away from your hearts. Okay? <laughs> Rob has told me that's where he'll be. <laughs> that might be the spot to avoid, perhaps. Well, I think it's been very moving from the first concert in Belfast all the way to the people in Glendalough, uh, particularly down in Cove, where we had a very big Irish audience. Uh, today at Kyle Moraba, it was a very international audience. Uh, this evening, we had a lot of Irish people in the audience again, and it really was heartfelt appreciation from the Irish people. They really captured the Irish spirit. Words can't come to me now. You, you have to experience yeah. it. I'll never forget the look on the fiddlers' faces as they were being embraced by people everywhere they went. You know, that people saying, you're performing our music, this is our music, and you've come back and you've given it to us. Really happy with the responses of the people and the appreciation. And I'm glad that we could bring some uh, authenticity to our work and building that bridge between America's traditional music and that of Ireland and the blending and the, the connection and the history. And it's, it's very proud for us to see groups like yourself honouring us with your presence and finding it suitable to come to Cove to entertain our guests. It's very special because I feel it's a legacy, you know, that I'm, I'm continuing from my parents and from my family. I love Ireland, I want to move here right now. <laughs>